I'm sat with Solomon Curtis. He's this country's youngest ever candidate for MP. And he's standing for Wealdon, which happens to be my constituency in the south of England. So, hello, Solomon. Thanks Hi. for agreeing to this interview. You're hoping to get elected to represent the views of about 77,000 different people. Uh, you'll have a hand in shaping national and international policy. And that's a huge responsibility for anyone, mm. especially for an 18-year-old who's just finished secondary school. What makes you think you're capable or even ready for that kind of job? Well, I, I've always questioned you know, what is an MP and what sort of person do we need as an MP. And I do think that the whole point of having members of parliament is to be able to represent that 80-odd thousand people's views. And I don't think that's about age. It's about the qualities of being able to listen to people and of being able to represent their views and you know making really sound judgments based on what your constituents think. And I think if you have the passion and the knowledge and the you know expertise to be able to do that, then I think anyone can do that. Mm. Okay. You recently called David Cameron an idiot on your Facebook page, and that was in response to his decision to send British military personnel to Ukraine. Uh, why is he an idiot? Look, you know, I think idiots uh, a term to describe, you know, I will use that term a lot to describe a lot of moves that he uh, makes in politics. I think it's idiotic that we have a bedroom tax, you know, it's idiotic that we have a tax rate of 45% for the richest people mm. in our country. Why did I call him an idiot on that? Is because I think David Cameron is someone who is very quick to make decisions without really thinking about this. I think we go, I think it's really, you know, it does relate to the Syria vote and it's something which I'm really, you know, glad that Ed Miliband actually thought about, you know, should we actually get involved in Syria and he decided to delay our response in that and made it very clear that the Labour Party didn't want to get involved and I think the majority of people would say that actually then following the circumstances that was the right thing to do and I think the fact that David Cameron's done that again and been really irrational with his um, decision I think it is idiotic. Okay right going back to this point of you being young for MP the article that the Independent did they put it online, and I've got a few of the comments here, and uh, you've told me that you don't like to read comments, but <laughs> okay. I read a few. Uh, Alex Laird here says, uh, this is ridiculous. Just another example of people going into Parliament with no life experience. Um, how can they ever relate to the real world? A chap here called Brutus, and he says, idiot Labour Party insulting the constituents of Wealdon by fielding a child with zero life experience. Right. Um, Phil Davis agrees and says, perhaps then he should get a job before entering politics. We're all sick of politicians who have done nothing else in life. Has he had a job, a career, a family? Has he bought or maintained a house or even paid tax yet? Mm. So that's some of the criticism. Mm. Is that valid for you? No, not at all. Um, I'm someone who runs a small business and last year, uh, sorry, this year, would have paid more in corporation tax than Starbucks did, or Amazon did, or Google did, yet I don't think people would be questioning if their CEOs were to be running for Parliament. I think, you know, it's, it's, I don't think it's about the quantity of experience, I think it's about whether you have the quality. And I think experience comes in lots of different forms. The fact that I was commuting to London to do various work in marketing, which is where my sort of work is, means that I have a real understanding of what people in Wilden are facing when they have to get the train to London every day and understand what the problems are with the trains or with the buses locally. Mm. And I think it's really relevant as well, having just left the education system, because what we have are MPs, uh, ministers, who don't really understand what the current education system is at the moment. And I really understand the impact that the changes have happened, you know, have had on young people from this government. And so, you know, I would, again, I don't read these comments, but I think that it's really important that people understand, you know, who I am and why I said I really keep to, you know, make that known. You've talked a lot about young people. Mm. Some people might think that you're a single-issue politician and that you represent young people, but you perhaps have little idea about what the average working no, I think, I, I, family wants. You know, I think there are issues that actually face people across the constituency. And you know, I've picked out three really key issues for my campaign. One is small businesses, because I run a small business. I think that runs 
deep into the ideas of family and family business, which is really prominent in Wilden. It, yeah, I think it touches a chord with elderly people and with younger people who want to see thriving local businesses in their high street. I said that we need to deal with the public transport crisis that we have in Wilden. There is a real issue with rural poverty, mm-hmm. not in a financial way so much, but in a real you know, way of people getting around. And I think that affects elderly people who've got their you know, uh, bus passes, and it affects young people who've got to get to school, and it affects people who have got to get to work as well. So I think that reaches right across the community. And I said that the NHS is really important, and I think it, that's really important to everyone. So I don't, you know, I don't believe it's about singular, you know, singular. Look, there's no, I'm not going to deny that young people are right at the core of my campaign in terms mm. of because not enough young people are voting. Wilden, however, is not a very young constituency. The people who live there are actually older than the national uh, UK average. I've got the data here, actually. Mm. So, yeah, here we go. So, 52% of Wilden voters are over the age of 45, mm. and 23% over the age of 65. There's a large retired population living in Wilden. Mm. How do you appeal to them? Well, I think it's about saying what sort of future do we want to have and what sort of country. And when I actually speak to elderly people, what they're really interested in is saying that it's really good to have you know, a candidate who is thinking forward and thinking for their children, for their grandchildren, for their great-grandchildren to make sure that actually the future of Wilden is really protected. I think we've got to think uh, long term. As I say, these issues are, fa- are facing people across the constituency. So I think, you know, when we, when we look at the old age group, I will say there are a lot of young people in Wilden, and it's, I think it's wrong to, you know, for anyone to categorise it as elderly when you have huge amounts of um, schools and sick forms in the area and people relying on, you know, public transport to get to there. But I completely take the point that mm. there's, you know, but I think everyone in Wilden is thinking actually to the future, but for some reason... Our politics isn't, so I want to change that. Right. Uh, The other thing that makes you stand out in Wheeldon, of course, is the fact that you're black or mixed race Mm. and you have very long, quite impressive dreadlocks. Mm. Whereas uh, the overwhelming majority of Wheeldon residents, it's about 95%, are white Mm. and probably have more regular haircuts. Mm. Is this an issue or a problem for you? No, it's not. I I think it's about changing the way that we do politics. And I think the way we do that is we get different types of people with different ideas and different passions and you know, d- different uh, style, so to speak. And, you know, I don't think people are interested in what an MP looks like. They're, this election is all about values. And I think they're thinking, we're 70 years old from the 1945 election when Labour introduced the NHS. Mm-hmm. People are worried about the state that our NHS is in. All you have to do is go to a and see how difficult it is to be seen within four hours. I see. You want to talk about the issues. That's fine. Wielden where you're standing, is an incredibly safe Conservative seat. Mm. Um, here I have the um, results from the last election. So the Conservatives have got 31,000 votes. That's mm. 56%. Mm. Uh, Labour has 5,000 votes in mm. the last election, which puts you at third, not even mm. second. So there's 25,000 votes between you and the Conservatives. Yeah. A lot of people might think of you as a bit of a lamb to the slaughter. Right. No, I don't, you know, I don't buy that again. You look at Enfield when Stephen Twigg stood against Michael, me and Michael Portillo, and there was a majority of about 17,000, and we overturned it. And I think what's, you know, you've got to look at the history as well of the, 2010 was a really bad year for Labour, but actually 2001 we got around 21% of the vote and actually did very well. And I do think it's entirely possible. It's wrong, I think, to have this idea that I believe the Tories have this arrogance, complacence, dominance of the constituency. And I think it's time that we break that. And we've seen the Lib Dems really struggling nationally. And I think Lib Dem voters will be thinking that, you know, maybe we need to change the way that we're doing politics in Wilden, which is once what the Lib Dems offered. And it's what I want to offer. So I think it's entirely possible to be the Conservatives. Okay. All right. So now I want to talk about Ed, Ed mm. Miliband, your party leader. David Cameron has consistently outperformed him in the polls.